All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Robert Smirking Gun Reviews. We are back again with another review for Friends from College Season 1, the build up to Season 2. We are at Episode 7, the penultimate episode of the season. It's called Grand Cayman, and if you haven't seen the episode, full spoilers are ahead. Um, a lot of stuff happens. It's your typical penultimate episode. We've got big mistakes made, big changes coming, big uh, endings, and it's just this was a good one and it really hit me like in the feels right at the end because of course they had to throw a Liz Fair song at me and uh, I haven't heard a Liz Fair song in so long that uh, man I was transported back in time like I got a little uh, uh. <laughs> uh, so yeah in this episode we find out that it's pretty clear that uh, Lisa knows that something's been going on between uh, Ethan and Sam. She doesn't say a thing, but it's how she goes about the whole episode. Um, and, you know, I don't even think she says anything about it in the finale either. But she's supposed to go to the Cran Cayman with the Wolf of Wall Street type guys uh, with Ike Barinholtz there. Um, again, just being so over the top. Um, the guys like that, I mean, I don't know what kind of bubble they're in that they can get away with that kind of behavior um, or how much money they must be able to throw at lawsuits because these guys are all like walking million dollar lawsuits, like multi million dollar lawsuits. Um, but she's going to go to the Grand Cayman and Nick says he'll go with her. And it immediately, you can tell that it puts the idea in her head that if she goes down there, what's going to happen? So she tries to at least try to make it look like she wants everybody to come with. Um, you know, by calling Ethan and saying, hey, let's go, let's do it. But, you know, knowing how much it costs, what it would take to get down there. But she has to look like she tried because her intent is to do what she's got planned. Um, and... But Ethan and Max decide that they're going to go to Cambridge uh, because Sam has to take her stepdaughter there because at her Harvard interview, she runs into the girl from last episode who was going out with Office Space Guy, <laughs> who's married to Office Space Guy. I wish I could remember his name. Um, she's doing the interview, and since she saw Ethan kissing her, and knowing that Ethan's not her husband, and since Greg German and his her husband's character is there at the interview, they bail, and now she has to take her to Harvard on her own to do the interview there in person. This gives Ethan and Max the opportunity to go back to their alma mater and try to work out this young adult novel that they're having a hard time cracking. Um, but it's also just another excuse for them to dive into the abyss of nostalgia and, and the fact that their lives just haven't been the same since college. You know, they, they're still trying to relive their glory years. And they have been in some way or another uh, for the past 20 years, except since they've been back in New York, since Ethan and Lisa has come back to New York, it's just blown up like it they, i mean i don't know i think that their lives would have blown up eventually but by going right back into the hornet's nest it just it ramped everything up to where it's just coming to a head now um this episode's got some really different direction as far as the way it's filmed it's way different uh in its style than any of the other episodes because of like the weird visuals that we get that represent going to the grand cayman like it ends with like a coconut dropping and like a turtle it, it's it's very strange as far as the the way that the other shows episodes are filmed they're not um artistic and it looks like they were going for artistic in this episode because there's also the montage that's done in i know that what they were doing here i mean they were doing this like walking tour of harvard you know mixing the the, the weird little boxes which is weird the way that they filmed that for just because it's 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 fine but it's way different than any of the other episodes and then to contrast what's going on with 
uh, Lisa and Nick. Um, and then they do it, uh, I thought they did it later on too, but there's another shot later on. But it just kind of filmed really differently. It made me think, the first thing I thought of was Disenchantment, the animated Netflix show from not too long ago. Uh, where just like tonally that show was all over the place and this because it was filmed in such a different way and it's such a different style than the other episodes that didn't fit them didn't match the way that the rest of the show is shot and filmed it kind of took me out of it a little bit but not in not in any way that i need to you know get in a twist over um so anyway ethan max sam and her stepdaughter go to harvard and nick and Lisa go to the Grand Cayman. And things just right off the bat, I mean, it, it seems like she's acting like she's drunk. Like she's she's being really like overly friendly and like, oh hey, this is my friend, and all this other stuff, and just nervous until she just she just straight up like Nick doesn't see this coming. Because see, Nick, like you can tell that he didn't see this coming because his life is a certain way, and you can tell the way he does things, just by the way he tells the girl um, that he's sleeping with uh, about the trip. Because, you know, he's, she's the girl from earlier in the, the, uh, the all-nighter episode. But he's already been, you know, he slept in the, uh, the episode Second Wedding with the, one of the bridesmaids. So he's cool with, like, just doing whoever he wants. He's got this girl that he has around... But he's, he's fine with just sleeping with other girls. So, like, the way he handles going on the trip is just how he is. Um, when she's like, yeah, sorry, I didn't want to. I, I know we were supposed to meet your parents, but I can't do it. I've got a, this thing, and I'm not changing it. And she's like, yeah, and you're like, no, I'm not. And so, you know, if he knew uh, what was the plan when they went down there, if he knew that he was going down there to sleep with her, he wouldn't look you know, act the way he's acting. He's just sitting on the bed kind of like going over itinerary and getting excited about a Coolio concert. So when she just jumps his bones, like he's really surprised. Now, does he just go with it? <laughs> yeah, he just goes with it because that's how he, that's Nick. He's not thinking about Ethan and Release's marriage or anything like that. He's just Nick, you know, who's basically got a constant heart on. Um, and so that's when they do the mix of like them on their walking tour. I do like Ethan trying to get into the hacky sack uh, group and then having a knife pulled on him. That's pretty funny. Um, but you know, they contrast that like very nice, you know, Harvard fall walking around, you know, to the hard cuts of between that and Ethan or not Ethan, Lisa and Nick's marathon sex a uh which is <laughs> pretty crazy i do like that they show the after effects of a sex session that long most shows don't even acknowledge sweating uh when when people are doing it they are really messed up i mean they're dripping sweat and they can't hardly move and they can barely sit down i do at least like the acknowledgement that sex can be painful <laughs> And not everybody just looks perfect afterwards, you know. This, there were consequences to it. Um, and immediately, she's just wallowing in guilt. Um, because this isn't her. This isn't how she does things. This isn't how she operates. This is how Nick operates. And she kind of throws it in his face. I do like how he, you know, fucks with, you know, her boss. That was great. I mean, it just shows how quick these guys are to temper. Um, but also kind of on the same level that Nick is to these guys. Like, he's he's not some, uh, he's not completely like these guys, but he's able to clown around with them kind of like they do. But she's, she can't deal with it. You know, she can't deal with, like, when she says, I don't cheat. I mean, as soon as the words are out, that's pretty much it for her. She can't even be there. And then she goes to work out, and she's punishing herself on the um, the treadmill. And, I mean, this is like the difference between her and Ethan, you know, is that she did something that she doesn't feel right about, and she's punishing herself. Ethan punishes himself by trying to overcompensate and make things worse. Um, 
But see, she's Nick doesn't understand that this pro this shouldn't have happened. He's kind of like, yeah, it's cool, right? Like, you know, I'm glad that we did this. And it's like, you know, he should have probably stopped it. He probably should have seen where this was going. But he, he just that's just not how he thinks. You know, he thinks that nothing's ever a big deal. Um, so, and man, it really looked like she took that fall. Like, I, I'm sure that they did something there stunt-wise or whatever, but damn, man, she really looked like she biffed it. I did like the whole I'm Doc Ock thing. That was pretty funny. Um, but then when she lays into him at the hospital, you know, this is the first time she's kind of wrong. Like, she knows she's, you know, she shouldn't be taking it out on him. You know, they're both at fault, but, you know... She's really trying to rip into him. And I, I do like that he's like, you know, kind of like puts the coke across the rooms like, fuck you. Like, you know, we were, we're both in on this. Don't try to just make me feel bad because of the way I live my life. If you're not happy with your life, you know, you should change it, you know. And at the second part of this, you know, we got Ethan and Sam visiting their old dorm uh, room to find their, you know, initials uh, etched inside the dorm room. I know, sneaking into somebody else's apartment or dorm and again, getting caught by the cops and, you know, her telling him like, look, we've been stopped twice by the cops since you've been back. This is, this is not normal. Like what we're doing, like I, we, we make bad decisions when we're around each other. At least she says that about herself anyway. Um, he's still in denial. And she finally kind of starts to do the right thing as far as like, if you want to be happy, you're going to have to start changing the way the, this pattern is and she at least says like straight out i love you and that's like kind of their no-no thing and that means basically the end of it that it's all over we can't keep going like this we are not in college we have to stop we have to grow up um and i like that and then they throw us that counting crows song long december which again hits me like right in the emotions and the nostalgia and takes me back in time and i i'm in that like i don't I, you know, I have been like everywhere I look these days. I'm reminded of the, the times that were before. I don't know. It's just been happening a lot more, more lately. Maybe my radar is tuned to like to to just notice things from the past a lot more these days. I don't know. But anyway, so Ethan and Sam are basically done, and Sam, uh, Lisa uh, goes to you know she's hobbled. And she goes to have breakfast in, in Grand Cayman. Mr. What's it, what they call him? You know, Ike Barinholtz's character gives her shit and she just snaps. And I love it. This was great. This was her just saying, you know, taking control of her life. Big, you know, and telling these people to fuck off, I quit. And then him kind of surprising her. You know, that he may be this immature guy, but he understands. Like, you know what? You know, we are. I, but he owns who he is. And so he's like, yeah, I'll write you a letter of recommendation or whatever you need, you know, and says clap for her. She made a stand. She took a stand against us and blah, blah, blah. So in some way, you know, like she, you know, just by standing up for herself, you know, she's, you know, coming clean and, you know, and, and starting to go on the right path for herself. And I, you know, as we, if you haven't seen the finale, which we're about to, which I'm about to rewatch. Um, you know, she's at least trying to make positive changes in her life. So anyway, uh, good on Kobe Smolders. And like I said, it ends, you know, with that Liz Fair song that just, <sighs> if you don't know who Liz Fair is, go look her up. She's from Chicago. She was a uh, really pretty kind of mildly famous in the nineties. Uh, she was Alanis Morissette before there was Alanis Morissette and she's way better than Alanis Morissette. If you like that kind of, if you know what I'm talking about, um, just a fantastic uh, singer. I haven't heard from her in a long time. Anything from her. I shouldn't say I, heard, I haven't heard from her like we're friends or something. But anyway, <laughs> that's it. Well, that's the penultimate episode. We're about to watch the finale and get that episode out before I go to bed tonight. And then we can start reviewing season two tomorrow. So if you like this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Otherwise, this is Robert Smirking Gun Reviews saying we'll see you on the next episode. Have a great night. And that, that's it. Ha, 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 ha.